Hey guys, it's Bailey. Welcome back to the channel and thanks so much for tuning in to what's going to be a getting ready with me followed by a full day wear test. I have a lot of new products. Some of it I bought, some of it was sent to me and I'm just getting a little overwhelmed to do like individual product reviews. So I thought I've never done this before on the channel. So I would do a getting ready. Re bleh, bleh. It's, it's early in the morning and I need my coffee thought I would do a getting ready with me where I talk you through things I'm applying. Some of these I've applied before, but haven't had a chance to do a review on. Some of these are totally new to me, but I'm going to sit here and talk you through as I apply everything. And then I might check in. I'm not great at checking in. I've tried vlogging and you'll notice none of them have made it up because I'm the worst at thinking to pick up the camera and check in. I might just talk to you at the end of the day here with like a full status update. We will see, but let's go ahead and dive in. So first up today, I'm starting with foundation. Nope, no, I'm not. It's a it's a loose powder foundation, and I have been having to get back into the habit of applying my concealer, a cream concealer first, because there is no faster way to get a creasy, crepey under eye area than going in and applying a cream or liquid over a powder. So for the concealer, I just recently picked up a lot of RMS Beauty stuff, and I want to do a separate full face using RMS Beauty but this is the only new concealer I have around right now, so I am going to put it to the test today. This is the Uncover Up number in the shade number 22, and so I'm gonna apply this in my under eye area, maybe a little spot concealing everywhere else. So part of the reason I picked this up, I recently was on vacation and checked out a little beauty boutique where they had a display of RMS Beauty, and I know they sell them I think they sell them at Sephora. I first discovered the brand through Birchbox, but I had never actually seen a display of all the products. And so while there, someone could actually walk me through kind of the benefits and how each of the products were supposed to be used. And so the concealer in particular intrigued me because they were telling me that you are supposed to be able to drop in the RMS Beauty Oil, which I also purchased and was not inexpensive, oh, let me tell you that, but you, you drop in the beauty oil and you mix it and it thins it out enough to where you can apply it as a foundation too. So like I said, that deserves its own beauty video because it's like a more involved sort of technique. I'm thinking I'll do the same thing there, but it was intriguing to me. So just a little background of why I have this RMS concealer, but there you can see a before and after. I wouldn't say it's totally full coverage, but it is pretty hydrating, not so hydrating that I feel like it's gonna be creasy and like a creasy mess in my under eye area, but enough to kind of fill fine lines and make your skin look a little bit more plump and less sunken in. At the same time, I wouldn't say it is too full coverage by any means, right? I mean, you can still see some discoloration here. I have like bluey purple in my inner under eye area and that is definitely still there. So if you want complete coverage, you will have to do some color correction underneath like breakout city. Just covering some redness around my nose. I recently got some sun here and so I hate to cover, I just, I do wanna take away some of that redness, but whenever I get some sun around my face, my freckles come out and so I don't really wanna cover that up. I just wanna minimize the redness. Okay, we're gonna call it a day for the concealer. Um, something I noticed is that this does kind of dry down. It's still a little tacky at this point, but it has dried down considerably since I first applied it, which is good because I was a little worried if it retained that super creamy consistency that it would look shiny and almost emphasize that under eye area, but looks like it's getting toned down. And the powder foundation I'm gonna go over it with should help as well. This I got from Octoly. It is from a brand I've never tried before. It's called Idun Minerals. Eden, Iden, I-D-U-N. Um, and I picked up the foundation thinking it was a pressed powder because I mentioned in the, my re most recent Sephora haul that I'm trying a ton of pressed powder foundations to do a full review, well, mo mostly a comparison amongst them all. Thought this was pressed. It is not. It is loose. But we're going to try it today anyway. This is the Mineral Foundation in Neutral Light Medium, also known as DISA, D-I-S-A. And so you open it up here. It comes in like an acrylic with a twist off cap like so. And the sifter in here is really neat. You can, it closes so you can like open it up and then shake it and then close it back, which I personally love because if you're traveling with something like this, you don't have to worry about most of your powder being above the sifter. And then it's like, what's the point? Why wouldn't I just use like a brush in here to pick it up? So I just open the sifter, shook it upside down for a little bit. And so there you can see it's dispensed probably too much product, but then you can go in and close it and just use the product that is left in the sifter. So I really like that. And go. Let's do half of the face. We can kind of see, a, get a good idea for a before and after. So it's going on really smoothly. It doesn't look, it's none too powdery. I have, I had swatched this on the back of my hand and noticed that it was pretty pearlescent. 
I thought at first, but it's not looking like that at all. I recently got some sun, um, funny story, on one side of my face because I was laying on my stomach with my face like this, and so like I have some peeling and texture on this side. It's good, we can understand how this applies over texture, but there is definitely a difference between the sides of my faces right now. It's a, it's kind of clingy, and I was, I did um, exfoliate and moisturize before this to try and get as much of that dry dead skin off as possible. It's clinging slightly to that texture, but not as much by any means as some of the other foundations that I have been wearing um, recently. So that's good to note. It's also a pretty good shade match, but I do feel like I have been layering for some time now and I'm not gaining, I've stopped gaining coverage. So let's take a look at that. So I'm on the Octoly site right now because I wanted to understand what kind of finish this is supposed to be because the packaging itself does not say. And it says the this ultra purified mineral foundation creates a luminous natural finish. So to me, that means light medium while caring for skin and protecting it. But does it have any SPF? I don't think so. Oh, it does because it has zinc oxide. The first ingredient is mica, the next one is zinc oxide, and then there are C followed by some numbers. I assume those are pigments. So it's very, it's like five ingredients, very, very minimal. So basically like a tinted sunscreen, you get a little bit of built coverage, but not nothing too extreme. Let's go do the other side of the face. Oh, on, on Octoly's site, they also recommend applying it with a flat top kabuki. So I do think this was the right choice. Win. Okay, I am getting powder everywhere. I forgot this about loose powder foundations as they are sometimes a little messy. I'm pretty pleased. I mean, if this is a, you know, a light to medium coverage foundation, I would say it's it's doing just that, evening out the skin tone, but still letting that natural um, pigment shine through. So I'm not like totally covering my freckles, just evening them out. That said though, if you do have hyperpigmentation, you're gonna have to do some serious color correcting and concealing underneath this if you, you know, have like mask or anything like that going on. Now onto the eyes, and this is the Kiss Hexa eyeshadow palette in pink nude. I got this thinking I was gonna do a comparison because they have a couple of these shades. When you go on Octoly's, I got this from Octoly as well. And when I was looking around, they had a couple of different shades and I thought this would be great to compare to like a Naked Basics palette because that's just kind of what it reminded me of. Well, I got pink nude. I don't know what I was thinking because that doesn't sound like it would be anywhere near the Naked Basics one or two. And sure enough, it is not. It is these warm, I mean, very beautiful tones, but definitely skewing farther from the browns and nudes that are in the Naked Basics. Also, all of these are shimmery except for this kind of light milk chocolate shadow here on the end. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm gonna, I don't even know what to put in my crease now. Um, I guess I'm gonna go in with this shade right here. All these look very, very similar. Like they look somewhat nuanced when you look at them in the pan, but I have a feeling when you apply them, they're gonna be pretty stinking similar. Beautiful though. And you know what? I haven't primed my eyes. Forgot that, but I'm still pretty impressed with how these are laying down. Now I'm gonna go in the same brush and go in with the sort of maroony berry looking shade here and apply that on the outer half. Overall, I would say um, the, the shadows are applying beautifully and have decent pigment. That's not quite as pigmented as I thought it would be. Maybe it's because I'm layering it over a somewhat similar shade, but it's definitely more subtle than I imagined. Just in thinking about how this eye look is gonna go, the one, the first like off the bat that I can think of that I'm not a super fan of is the fact that it doesn't have a mid-tone brown. And I know that a lot of us you know, we have them floating around in other shadow palettes so we can easily grab them to supplement. But this is kind of a nice palette to travel with if you're just gonna throw a neutral palette into your bag or whatever, or you just wanna go to one everyday go-to palette. Um, the only matte shade in here I think is good for the outer corner, but then you're gonna have to bring that up through the crease if you want anything matte in your crease, because this is kind of all shimmery. Using that same fluffy brush, just gonna run the lightest cream shade up into my brow, then blend it into that basically everything that I've blended into my crease up to this point. But yeah, I would still love a mid-tone, a matte mid-tone brown here, but not bad. Okay, now I'm gonna take a flat shader and go into that deepest chocolate, whoa, there's a protector there, deepest chocolate brown shade, and pat that in my outer corner as well as run that on my lower lash line. Also, the fallout situation here is pretty good. I did my foundation before my eyes, and I'm happy to not really need to swipe away any fallout. Ooh, that looks, that looks nice. I dig that. But again, very subtle. I don't, there's not a huge variety in shades in this palette. I do feel like they could have swapped out one or two of these shades because they look so similar and you would have a little bit more versatility and 
contrast amongst these shades. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you could take, um, you know, the first, you could exchange the first color I laid down for one or two other shades in this palette and achieve the same eye look, right? But if they had put in, you know, somewhat dramatically different colors, you'd have a lot more versatility in your eye looks. Just my two cents. Okay, now I'm gonna take one last pass with that fluffy blending brush, and I'm gonna call the eyes good. No, I'm not, because I also have a liner. It is the By Terry Stilo Black Star, S-T-Y-L-O. I think we all discovered when Hourglass came out with their lip things that is pronounced Stilo, not Stylo. And if that is still wrong, I'll get it right the next time. So this is in the shade Bronze Green. I got this from Octalie as well and chose, they had a couple of shades to choose from. I had already tried, and I have a review of this up as well, the, um, is it called the Ombre Black Star? But it is basically an eyeshadow pencil and fell in love with the texture and the longevity. Like it lasts without a primer on me all day. It's one of those eye crayons where you can throw on, it creates this multi multi-dimensional look and it's a one and done shadow that lasts all day. So knowing that, I saw this on Octoly and was like, yes please, I'd like to give that a try. So here it comes in this pencil format with a tapered tip and there's also a little sharpener on the end here so you can maintain that tapered tip because it is supposed to be um, a, a multi-purpose stick where it's like, could be an all over eyeshadow but you could also use it as a liner. Here we go. So this is a, a beautiful khaki green color that I'm just gonna use to smoke out my lash line. And maybe line my waterline. So this is gonna be a little dramatic. Ooh. Ooh, 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 this is like a, a deep khaki green with a gold fleck. <gasps> yes. Ooh, but one thing this pencil doesn't have is something to smudge. So I'm just taking a flat smudger. This one's from Luxie Beauty, probably. Yeah, Luxie 221. I'm using that to smudge that along the upper lash line, as well as run that along the lower waterline. Does anyone have the problem where on one eye, they apply it in a certain way, like because of the angle, when you apply it on this side, I'm good at getting it above the lashes, but on the right eye, for some reason, I like go at it from a downward, like it, and then more product ends up getting in my lashes than on the lash line. I don't know, it's funky. I've only been doing my makeup for how many years and it's like, I can't get it right. Is that, well, they are sisters, not twins, yep. That's today's motto. All right, now for mascara and brows, nothing new. On um, For the mascara, I'm using the Dior Show Pump and Volume, which I just did a review on. And then for the brows, I'm gonna keep it easy today and go through with the Makeup Forever Brow Gel in number 35. So I'm gonna do that and then come back. Okay, so lashes and brows are done. Now I'm gonna go in with this By Terry Glow Expert Duo Stick. They sent this um, to me as well when they sent me that Stilo. Not because I applied for it, there were some shipping issues with the Stilo, and so they ended up sending that plus this, but I thought I'd try it here today. It is a cream product though, so we'll see how this performs over the powder. I know that's a no-no, but I do know that some powder products can withstand it, especially once they have set. So we're gonna take the risk, but I am only using the uh, blush side. You can see there is a duo blush highlighter, and I think the idea is that you're supposed to go in like so and blend it out, but I'm just gonna stick with the blush because I have a separate highlighter that I'm going to use here today. Just applying, now that is too, pink. What was I thinking? This for some reason was looking more like a peachy pink and it's coming off as more of a pinky pink, which does not necessarily go with my eyes. And sure enough, that is moving the foundation around. Okay. We're just going to even it out because what's better than one side looking jacked up? Two. Yeah, that's definitely moving some stuff around. So we're gonna go in with a powder. This, I'm just gonna go in with the Becca Chrissy Teigen. It happens to be sitting here. You can go check out a review that I recently did of that. But I'm just gonna go in with the bronzer and a somewhat fluffy, fluffy brush in there. Luckily, I only applied that stick blush to a very concentrated piece of my uh, cheek, so it didn't totally disrupt the foundation, but it definitely moved it around a little bit. And my hair's in there. What else is new? Then I'm gonna take a little smaller brush and go in with this peachy, um, peachier pink blush. Then for the highlight, I'm very excited about this. This is the, let me clean it off because it's nasty with fingerprints. This is the Dior, um, Dior Skin Nude Air Luminizer in the number three, this gorgeous, golden champagne shade. This I also got through Octoly, and I was tempted to try, after trying the, the Dior mascara, I 
Thought I'd broaden my experience with the brand because I haven't really tried a whole lot of Dior besides the Air Flash, which used to be one of my favorite go-to foundations. I say go-to for like special occasions and days when I had serious skin issues because I wouldn't use it every day because it's pricier. Um, but I wanted to try more within the brand Dior. So applied to try this and have been pretty impressed so far. It came with this brush that's actually pretty useful. Um, and so I just, a little bit in there and apply that to the tops of the cheekbones. And what I've been pretty impressed with is despite being so in your face highlighty, it hasn't really emphasized the texture that I have going on on my cheeks right now. I've I tried this before I went to the beach and got some sun on my face, obviously loved it on like normal skin, but was a little hesitant to see what it would be like because when you pick it up on the brush, it kind of separates into what is more of a not chunkier powder, but definitely not the, you know, super molten metal highlight you see here. But once you apply it to your face, it kind of reassumes that molten metal sort of highlight. And so it just doesn't emphasize the texture like I thought it would. So I'm applying that, tops of my cheekbones, um, Cupid's bow, nose, you know the drill. So there it is applied. I am pretty impressed with the way this applies and how it preserves that like very finely milled metallic sheen that transfers onto your face, unlike some where it kind of becomes this chunky, gl more glittery mess. And that's not the case with this. Okay, so that is it for the rest of the face. I've just gone on to apply a lip. I didn't have anything new to try. So this is Smashbox's Liquid Metal in Mauve Squad. I thought it, whoa, whoa, take a second and evaluate your decisions, hair. Be better. Um, I thought, <sighs> I am not happy with this color combination I have going on on my face. Like, I feel like it feels like different products are being tested that weren't necessarily meant to go with each other because I have that pinky hue or like the more baby pink compared to the deeper bronzy mauve compared to this cooler mauve on my lips. Feels a little disjointed, so if you're thinking the same thing, I feel ya. But this is for testing purposes, so let's just see how this wears throughout the day. I'm gonna take a couple pictures and then we'll either check in if I can remember or we will just talk, we'll regroup at the end of the day. Let's go. Okay, so I thought I would come into the sunlight to show you, but I think it might be a little too um, shady here, but we'll see. So overall, still wearing pretty good. I also realized I didn't tell you what time I put this on. It was nine, no, 8.30 when the, my face was finished. So it is 12.01 right now. So a couple hours worth of wear, my lip is gone because I've been drinking coffee and water and snacking and things like that. But for the most part, the rest of my face is in good shape, which is good because it has only been like three hours. So I would say consider this like I just put this makeup on, but it's good to see in natural light just how kind of dewy and lit from within I would say this is. Because it had kind of a satiny, you could tell it had a satin finish under the studio lights, but now you just get a better feel for what it looks like now. It looks so blue. I'm not sure that's a setting or what. So just kidding. I actually walked in and realized that maybe it would be better to see it under these natural lights because I look a little less blue, but you can still get a feel for what it looks like. So let's maybe zoom, nope zoom in this away. Like I said, lip products worn off. You can still see that spot from the cream, um, cream situation up in my cheeks, but for the most part, everything's laying really nicely and evenly over top, um, still maintaining its coverage. But like I said, it's only three hours in. I have been blowing my nose though, and it's withstood that pretty decently. So that, that is the check-in. Now we'll see you next time. <laughs> okay, so we're back. This is for less of a beauty check-in, although I did just take Dallas out for like a midday play. It is 86 outside right now. So it, it was probably, probably out there for like 20 minutes. I was throwing his ball back and forth. And so we both got a little bit of a, okay, workout's a stretch, but we were active in the hot, hot heat in the sun. Little bit of shine development, very, very minimal. But that's not what this is about. Not much has changed, bottom line. But this is about checking in on some beauty mail I got. First up is this guy. Um, this is from e.l.f. and I actually already bought all of these duos so these will probably go in a giveaway. Um, they sent this liquid eyeliner, they sent some cat ears so another headband for when I need to put my hair back during while I do makeup and then an eye primer which I would like to retry because it's been a while since I have. Then over here is Pixie and they sent their peel and polish. This is with 6% lactic acid and will you focus? Lactic acid and papaya. I actually just used this for the first time this morning um, and can have a video up on that coming soon, but they sent two more tubes. So again, more to give away. 
And then what I just picked up from my mailbox was this box from Urban Decay, which includes, it says pink is punk, and so includes a lot of just pink Vice lipsticks. They sent me a couple packages of Vice lipsticks before, so I suspect there will be some duplicates within here. So again, more stuff to give away, but let me know if you have any questions about any of these products, what you wanna know. I haven't done a review yet, of these guys so if there's something specific you want to know about them i actually have a video i have already used them on my lids i do a look with each of the duos so if you have any specific questions about them let me know but besides that look for videos coming up on this goodness in the future okay and we're back it is 7 p.m and I'm pretty impressed with how this face held up. I am wearing a different lip. I decided that the frosty, cooler pink from the Smashbox wasn't cutting it, so I went with the deeper berry from the color changing Givenchy thing that I talked about a couple weeks ago. I'll link it up there if you're curious. Gotta say, I just took the after shot and I wanted to make sure that like my eyes weren't playing tricks on me and that I didn't just want to like everything, so I put the, I actually looked at it on my big screen, my computer here, and I was really impressed with how this wore. It did oxidize a little bit. I don't think it's the lighting because that stays pretty consistent, but my face overall looks a hair deeper at the end of the day versus the beginning. So I do think the powder oxidizes a little bit, but the way everything sat on top of it from bronzer to blush, the highlight, it all lasted really well throughout the day. I, today I noticed my, I caught myself touching my face a couple of times. Um, I am, you can see I have a little bit of redness here at the bottom of my nose, but normally like with liquid foundations, it, the whole tip of my nose is gone and even farther up here when I blow my nose from like allergies and stuff. And it lasted really, really well along the nose for what is almost or about an 11 hour day right now. The other thing I'm pretty impressed with is look at this eyeshadow. I totally forgot to prime this morning. And not only is the eyeshadow in place, crease free, um, kind of fade free, it might have faded a hair in the inner corner. Um, but overall, considering I didn't prime, pretty impressed, and same with the liner. I did put it in my waterline, and I have very temperamental eyes in general, like they're dry, but also somewhat watery, and long story short, I just have an issue with eyeliner lasting in my waterline, so I'm not terribly upset that it isn't still there because you look at the upper lash line and like it's held its shape, it's held its pigmentation, I am pretty impressed with how this look held up. So in conclusion, this foundation, pretty impressed. It retails for $35 individually. You get nine grams of product in this entire package. Like I said, I love the packaging. I might recommend you err on the side of lighter, just given how it oxidized on me. I don't think it's too far away from my neck, like it's not too far off from my neck, but just in looking right at that before and after, I could see it definitely oxidized and I liked the way it looked when I first applied it. So maybe air a little lighter if foundations tend to oxidize on you. Next up are the eyes, this Kiss Little Hexa palette. I had some criticisms when I was applying this to my eyes regarding the shade range. That still holds true, but given the quality of the shadow and like how even without a primer, it lasted fading crease free throughout the day and how pigmented they were without a primer, I'd be tempted to try some of the other shade or some of the other palette um, color collections, if that makes sense. Some of the other palettes within the collection, within the line, be thinking that they might have a different sort of shade selection and maybe a better contrast. That said, this retails for $7.99, so it's not going to break the bank if you want to try it. And if these are your, these neutrally kind of rosy tones are your wheelhouse, Eight bucks isn't a bad way to go about getting it, especially given the shadow quality. On to the By Terry Stilo Black Star. Again, this is the shade Bronze Green. I really like the shade. It clearly held up to the test of time on my eyelids, unprimed. I think it'd work great as a shadow as well, which is also something this is supposed to do because it didn't migrate at all. It didn't become, you know, more smoky or crease or transfer anywhere. I definitely think the lasting power is there. And while all that is awesome, it's also something I would come to expect from something that is $30. So just something to keep in mind, when I review, you know, the higher the price tag, sort of the closer to perfection a product needs to be, this to me is it. Like if you, it's a one and done kind of product, this, this also unlike the kind of single rounded ombre black star uh, eye pencils that I've tried before, this offers not only the tapered tip to start, but then that sharpener as well. So you really are going to be able to continue to use it both as an all over shadow and a an eyeliner or smoky liner stick. Like it just offers a little bit more versatility. And for that reason, it might almost be even a little bit of a better buy because it offers that multi-purpose functionality. Let's see, I tried a little bit of that by Terry blush duo. You can see it lasts all day, but I want to give like both the highlight and blush a second chance. And now we know how it performs over 
loose powder. So I just want to continue testing that before I give my final thoughts on it. But you can see it did last, like the pigment lasted all day, but that is with the addition of a powder blush layered over top. Just something to keep in mind. But if you want to hear more on that, I'll create a separate video. I think the only other thing that was new in this video is the highlighter, the Dior, Dior Skin Nude Air Luminizer. This, I mean, it's gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. But the more I look around between the Wet n Wild highlighter I mentioned earlier and then it looks like Maybelline's also come out with something similar, I just want to try a few more highlighters before I give this a solid two thumbs up. I mean, alone, like, yes, it's, it's absolutely an amazing highlighter. I can find no faults with it. It's great not only on your cheeks, but it's also a great wash of color over the lids. It maintains that, you know, high shine metallic pigment without breaking up into a glittery disco ball mess, which can't be said for all highlighters that look like this. Honestly, what was the cult one from Laura Geller? Um, honey, something golden honey or whatever that was. Everyone raved about it and I tried it. And it just looked like a glittery mess on me, but it looked like this in the pan. So this preserves this finish, I think, on your face and is easily layered to create either something more natural or something like boom in your face. So there's something to be said for that, but I just don't know that I can give it a full on, yeah, you gotta have it until I've tried a few other things that just bear some striking resemblance. So let me know if you want to see a video, if I can get my hands on that Wet n Wild and Maybelline and maybe some other similar highlighters just for the sake of comparison. And I can create a separate video about that because this is absolutely beautiful for beautiful for all the reasons I just listed, but yeah, just, I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted. So that, that's everything new from me. I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of these products. If you tried them before, if some of these are totally new to you, like, you know, like the foundation was to me, this totally new brand. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I really hope you guys enjoy this video. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys.